I welcome you to another lecture of quantum computing. In this lecture, we will learn about period finding algorithm. Period finding algorithm is similar to the Simon's algorithm that we have learned a few lectures ago. However, it is a bit cooler as compared to Simon's algorithm. It is because in period finding algorithm, uh, we will use quantum Fourier transformation and also properties of quantum Fourier transformation. So here is the problem definition. Uh, given a periodic function which takes uh, n bits as input and produces n bits outputs, our goal is to find its period r such that f of x is equal to f of x plus k r. And k could be any integer but not equal to 0. So let's do an example to make this definition more clear. So our periodic function in this example takes four bits as input and it produces four bits outputs. And our function is defined as f of x is equals to x mod 3. So we have here uh, inputs of our function and we have here uh, corresponding outputs of our function. So because in this case our function takes uh, 4 bits as input, uh, therefore it will take input from 0 to 15. And uh, the output will be um, mod 3 of input. So for 0, we will get output 0. For 1, we will get output 1. For 2, we will get output 2. And for 3, we will once again get output 0. And for 4, we will get output 1. For 5, we will get output 2. And so on. A question can be asked that how can we solve this problem on a classical computer? On a classical computer, we can give uh, different inputs to the function in order to find two outputs which are same. So, for example, in this case, on a classical computer, we can give a function input 0, which was the first input, and our output in this case will be also 0. So, we can give function input 1 to get output 1, and then we can give function input 2 to get input output 2. So far, no output has been repeated. But if we give our function another input which is 3, then we will get output 0, which, uh, which we have seen before. So our period will be the difference of uh, the two inputs that have produced same output. So our period r in this case will be uh, 3 minus 0 equals to 3. So one can ask that uh, this is not that bad because we are able to find our period in theta r time complexity. But r, the period could be proportional to the number of inputs. So in this case, uh, the period was 3, but the number of in inputs was 16. But in other case, our period could be uh, almost equal to the size of input. Therefore, our running time uh, will be equal to uh, 2 raised to power n, which is an exponential running time. And we know that exponential running time is not good. Let's see that how can we solve this problem on a quantum computer and why quantum computer solve this problem uh, much faster as compared to classical computer. For that, uh, we have to make a quantum circuit. But before that, let me clear the board. The function f, whose period we want to find, might not be unitary. Thus, we might not be able to use function f directly in the quantum circuit. Instead, we have to first develop a quantum wrapper over the function f. I call the quantum implementation of function f as bf. So, 
our quantum implementation of function f bf which will be unitary obviously will take two inputs uh, one x and second cat zero and the output of the uh, function bf will be x unchanged and corresponding outputs of function f f of x. So, we can start by making quantum circuit of bf. We have here uh, bf. It will take two uh, registers as input. First register can have the input of the function uh, and second register will have cat 0 and the output will also be uh, same as the input in the first register whereas in second register it will have f of x. We do not want to give function bf some specific input x and uh, because in that case we will only get our output which is correspond to some specific input x. We want to make use of quantum superposition. We want to give function bf all possible inputs so that our output is also has all the possibilities in it. In order to create superposition of all possible inputs, uh, we can uh, uh, use Hadamard gates and uh, apply those Hadamard gates on cat 0 and the, our result will be the equal superposition of all possible inputs. Thus, I add here Hadamard gate with tensor product n and then I give Hadamard gate uh, cat 0 as input. Whereas, my second register will also have cat 0 as input. Now, my input to function bf is superpositions of all the x's and cat 0. Note at this stage first register will have all possible values of x and the second register will have all possible values of f of x in equal superposition. Specifically uh, first register will have 1 over square root of 2 raised to power n uh, summation x from 0 to 2 raised to power n minus uh, 1 and cat x. These are all possible values of x in equal superposition. Similarly, second register will also have all possible uh, values of f of x in equal superposition. So, second register will have 1 over square root of 2 n uh, summation x is equal to 0 to 2 n minus 1 uh, times f of x. A great idea here is to measure the second register. So, if I measure the second register, then it will transform both of the register. It is because these two registers are not physically separated from each other their states are tensor product with each other. So, I can write the combined state of both of those registers as 1 over square root of 2 n summation x is equal to 0 to 2 n minus 1 and the first register will have cat x whereas the second register will have f of x corresponding f of x. So, if I measure only the second register then according to the rule of partial measurement content of the first register will also change. If my measurement result of the first register is let us say uh, f of x1 where x1 is some specific value of x then the first register will have only those x's that can produce this specific output. Specifically the first register will have x1 because x1 can produce f of x1 and because f of x1 is a periodic function. So, the first register will also have x1 
plus r, it will also have x1 plus uh, 2r dot 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 and the last entry will be x1 plus uh, 2 raised to power n over uh, r minus 1 times r. And these all values in the first register will be in equal superposition. So we can divide this all by the square root of 2n over r. And this is great. We have achieved something very amazing because now we have here specific uh, f of x and uh, that is f of x1 and we have here only the inputs that can produce the specific output. By measuring these inputs, we can extract the period r. I don't even have to measure all of those inputs. I can measure a small subset of those inputs in order to attain the period r. But there is a problem. When I measure one of those inputs, which are in equal superposition, then the first register will no more in the superposition state. It will be in pure state because we know that measuring any register change superposition to a pure state. Therefore, we have to rerun this whole circuit. But when we rerun this whole circuit, then both registers will once again be in superposition. And when I measure the second register first, then I might not get here f of x1. I might get here f of x2 or f of x3 or some other value of x. And based upon the value in the second register, the first register will have different superposition. So the summary of so far what we have achieved is this, that we have to run this whole circuit again and again. And whenever we run this circuit again, then after measuring second register, we can get different value of f of x. And based upon the value of f of x that we have measured in the second register, in the first register we will have different superposition. And if we measure the first register, then we can potentially get all the values of x. So we cannot achieve any speed up using this method. So we are stuck here. In order to find a possible solution, uh, let's list uh, possible measurements of the second register and corresponding superposition of the first register. Maybe by listing first and second register and observing them, we can find some solution. So I have listed content of second register after measurement and corresponding superpositions of the first register. That is when I measure F0 in the second register, then my corresponding superposition of the first register is cat0 plus cat0 plus r plus cat0 plus 2r and so on. Obviously, I have to normalize it but uh, for the sake of simplicity, I am not normalizing them here, but assume that they are normalized. Let's observe the content of first register. This superposition and this superposition are exactly the same, but they have a linear shift of one in between them. So they have a linear shift of one. Similarly, this superposition and this superposition are exactly the same, but they have linear shift of 2 in between them. Similarly, there is a linear shift of k between these two superposition. Now, when we have studied the properties of quantum Fourier transformation, then we have learned that quantum Fourier transformation removes the linear shift from the input. So, if we use quantum Fourier transformation here, then our output of the quantum Fourier transformation will have no linear shift it will have a phase shift. However, we know that the phase shift does not affect the result of measurement. So, our solution here is that we will use here quantum Fourier transformation to eliminate the linear shift and now our outcome of the first register will have no linear shift and we can achieve our speed up after measurement the first register we will have here 
phase shift, but the phase shift will not affect the measurement. Quantum Fourier transformation also changes the period of a function. So period here was r, but after applying quantum Fourier transformation, period become 2 raised to power n over r. We have also discussed that in the properties of quantum Fourier transformation, whose link will be somewhere here. I hope that my explanation, uh, in which I have solved this problem by discussion with you, will uh, be good enough for you to understand uh, period finding algorithm. Uh, if I have failed my objective, then don't worry. In the next video, I will present a concrete example. In that example, I will do each and every step. I, I hope that by the end of the next video, your all doubts will be clear. So, see you in the next video.